The story of Bill Snyder and the remarkable turnaround of the Kansas State football program is the kind of stuff filmmakers dream about. It's David versus Goliath. Washington's Crossing of the Delaware and D-Day all rolled into one hard-working, heartwarming script. That may sound a bit presumptuous, but with all things being relative, Snyder's role in the Kansas State history book is already that significant. When Bill Snyder arrived at Kansas State five years ago, the vision of a winning football program was just that, a distant thought, hope, and dream. But Snyder isn't into fairy tales and make-believe. And the fact remains that no football program in America has climbed more ground and won more believers in the last five seasons. So it should come as no surprise that people across the country are calling this the greatest turnaround in college football history. And it culminated with a 1993 season that turned heads from coast to coast and gave the Wildcat football program a new and much deserved label. Five years ago, it was called the worst program in college football. Two years ago, it was called the most improved program in college football, and now after the 1993 season, it's being called simply one of the best programs in college football. Kansas State's 1993 football season was one of achievement, perseverance, and last-minute drives. But to put the year into proper perspective, one must turn back to August 1993. That's when a group of regional media called the Big Eight Skyriders picked the Kansas State Wildcats to finish last in the Big 8 Conference. Granted, there were a lot of questions that needed to be answered. Who would replace running back Eric Gallon, the second leading rusher in school history? How good was this new quarterback, Chad May? And what about the defensive front seven, which returned just one starter from the previous season? But as the season unfolded, those question marks turned into strengths, and the Wildcats answered their critics with a nine win, two loss, and one tie record that ranks as the second winningest season in K-State history and the finest since 1910. K-State opened the 1993 season at home against New Mexico State and christened the brand new $3.3 million Dev Nelson press box, considered one of the best of its kind in the United States, and did so with a 34-10 victory over the Aggies. Perhaps the first drive of the new season was a prelude of things to come as the Wildcats marched 80 yards in 16 plays on their first drive of the season to take an early 7-0 lead. Ball inside the one. All-American center Quentin Neuer grabs that pigskin. Double tight ends offset eye for the Wildcats. May with a long count. Hands it off to J.J. Smith. He's got second effort in there for the touchdown. The outcome was never seriously in doubt, but with K-State holding a 20-7 lead in the fourth quarter, the Wildcats iced the game with two huge plays. First from fullback, Rod Schiller. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, May. Sweep left side goes to Schiller. He's at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Rod Schiller, as he busts a quick hitter to the outside and gets into the end zone. And then from wide receiver and kick returner, Andre Coleman. Nice boot, a high spiraling kick. It backs up Andre Coleman to his own 25. Coleman, jitterbugs left, moves right, gets a block, gets two, 40, 45, 50. Says the tackler, 45, he's at the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, he's at the 10, 5, touchdown, Andre Coleman, a long punt return. Coleman's electrifying punt return for the touchdown was the first by a Wildcat return man in 15 years and helped K-State open the season with a victory for the fourth consecutive season. In week two, the Wildcats survived an early scare from visiting Western Kentucky before exploding for 24 second-half points to down the Hilltoppers, 38-13 at KSU Stadium. Trailing 14-13 at the half, Western Kentucky marched deep into K-State territory on the first drive of the third quarter until senior All-American Thomas Randolph came up with his first interception of the season to turn the game in K-State's favor. Chad May seized the moment with a 92-yard touchdown drive in just five plays, capped by a 33-yard touchdown pass to freshman Kevin Lockett, who made the first of numerous spectacular catches on the season. May, two steps, looks back, now is in trouble, runs away from the blitz, now holds, now fires for the end zone, the pass is caught, Kevin Lockett, touchdown! Kansas State on a great play of 33 yards, and once again, 
once again, discipline reigns for K-State. May running out of the pocket and expires a strike for 33 yards to Kevin Lockett, his first career touchdown. Edwards, the single back, back to throw May, looks right. Now firing for the end zone, lofting a pass up for Coleman, who makes the grab, touchdown, nine yards deep in the end zone. Roll the highlight tape again, Andre Coleman. Just beating two Western Kentucky defenders, two yards deep in the end zone for the Kansas State touchdown of 21 yards. It would be hard to identify one game as the turning point in the season when that year included the first victory over Oklahoma since 1970 and the school's first ever bowl win. But there's no doubting the Wildcats came of age on September 18, 1993 with a 30-25 victory at Minneapolis, Minnesota's Metrodome over a Minnesota Gopher team that was the only Big Ten team to defeat Rose Bowl champion Wisconsin. Affectionately known as the Homer Dome, when the Minnesota Twins are in town, K-State had its Homer hankies out early in this one, as Chad May hooked up with Kevin Lockett, going long on a 53-yard bomb on the second play of the game. May is back to pass once again, rolling out. Feels some heat, has some time, and he goes deep. And he finds his man, Kevin Lockett. Touchdown, Kansas State. Kevin Lockett. 11 catches on this team, now has 12, leads the team, and Kansas State strikes quickly against the Minnesota secondary. K-State scored on its first three possessions to bolt out to a 17-0 lead. But Minnesota wouldn't back down and cut the deficit to 17-13 at halftime. A wide-open offensive game in the first half turned into a defensive struggle in the third quarter with Thomas Randolph making another huge interception to hold a gopher drive in K-State territory. K-State finally got back on the board early in the fourth quarter with this seven-yard run from quarterback Chad May. But Minnesota regained the lead with a nine-yard pass from Tim Shade and the sack of Chad May in the Wildcat end zone. Three receivers to the right of Chad May. And he's back to pass and feeling pressure from the outside. He's down in the end zone. And it might be a fumble on the play. We'll wait for the official call. Touchdown, Minnesota. Trailing 25 to 24 with just over five minutes remaining, K-State turned to its home run hitter, if you will, Andre Coleman, to set up the game's winning score. Kickoff goes to Andre Coleman. He's a burner. He's at his five to the 10, 15, 20, 25. He's got some room. 30, 40, 45, he's got one man to beat, it's Rashawn Early. Rashawn Early, the state champion in high school in Texas as a junior, had enough speed to bring down Andre Coleman. His only early was in the way of a touchdown for Kansas State. Five plays later, J.J. Smith sprinted in from seven yards out to give K-State the 30-25 lead it would not relinquish with just more than three minutes left. But Minnesota promptly drove the ball into scoring territory before K-State came up with a goal line stand to preserve the win. Levine in motion behind Tim Shade. Chris Darkins, the lone back. Darkins on the handoff at the five. Yeah, Trying to get outside. Russell down, though, inside the five by Mike Ekelar. Second and goal on the four. Minnesota needs a touchdown. And on the counter, yeah, Shade yeah. keeps it, feels the pressure, and tries to find Antonio Carter incomplete. You got David Bertin, number 61, lined up as a tight end. You got Giovanetti in there. You got just a bunch of big horses in there. Backs in the eye and a handoff to Darkins, who tries to dart forward, gets near the two. Fourth down and goal on the two yard line. Minnesota has a shot to win this football game. 52 seconds on the clock. Levine in motion, shade back to pass. Looks to Osterman too high. Steve Hanks on the coverage, and Kansas State will take over. The victory was the first of four games that K-State would win or tie in the final minute, and it gave the Wildcats their first road victory over a non-conference team since 1979. But more importantly, it gave the team a sense of confidence and inner belief that it could indeed accomplish its lofty goals that were set prior to the season.